Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Candy Wars. This is a new one by 4Fun Games. It is a 1-4 to four player game that takes roughly half an hour to hour to play, and is both a competitive and cooperative game as both modes are included. In the game itself, before the gnomes became the garden gnomes that you know and love, there was the Candy Wars, where they brother fought brother gnome, trying to gain control of the territories, and then once the gluttons have shown up, they teamed up to fight against them to save their kingdom and keep their candy and precious chocolate in the mix. So with this one, again, it has two different modes in it. There is a cooperative mode where players are going to be playing through a campaign, and as they play through, they'll get access to new cards to be able to upgrade their decks and improve them, giving them more powerful attacks as the campaign goes on. But also the glutton enemies are going to level up as well, and they are going to have a more powerful side on top of that. And each one of the scenarios included in the campaign is going to have different features and different objectives and that to keep things fresh and moving forward. There's also a competitive mode where players can challenge other players and go head to head all the way up to four players going head to head against each other, trying to defeat their fellow gnomes, taking out gluttons in the process, and meeting different mission objectives. And whoever does this first will trigger the end of the game where all players will have an equal number of turns, finishing off that round, and then they'll go into a final scoring where the players will figure out based on their points on the board and how many objectives they've completed how many points they have, and the player that has the most will be the winner of the game. And there's also a campaign within this as well, where you'll be able to play through a number of different scenarios, being able to gain additional gnomes in your party, and being able to challenge people with more and more gnomes at your disposal. So some really interesting mechanics with that. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the main features of the game and showing you a sample turn. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. First, I want to start with the heroes. So there'll be eight different heroes included in the base game. Each one of these heroes is going to have their own miniature and their own card. And each hero's card is going to list two special abilities that hero will have. Such as with Gordy here, he gets an extra point of movement each turn that he activates. And anytime he gains a utility card, he'll get to draw an extra one. Each of the heroes is also going to have a Sugar Rush card, which is going to provide that hero with a generic attack, as well as throughout the game, if that hero ever fails in an attack, they get to move their marker up along the gauge. Each time they move it up along the gauge, it's a permanent addition for the rest of the game. It will provide the player with additional opportunities to score hits. For example, initially in the game, the only way you can score a hit is to roll the hit symbol. But if you miss an attack, then for the rest of the game, lollipops are also going to count as hits. If you miss again, then also the candies are going to count as hits. And finally, if you miss again, then the hearts are going to count as hits as well as heart symbols. So it'll provide you with a lot more opportunities to score hits later in the game if you end up failing early on. Each character is also going to start the, the campaign with a base set of attack cards as well as utility cards. With each of the attack cards, they're going to specialize in different things such as the vanilla sniper or the cheesecake explosive gift or the lollipop battle axe. Each one of these will list the range that weapon has, the number of dice you're going to roll, the amount of which, how many enemies it can target, how much damage it does initially, as, as long as you roll a pair of hits or again other symbols if you have moved up your gauge and then if there are any special abilities such as with the lollipop if you get a hit then you can also push your enemy one space away. And then you also have access to utility cards. Initially, you won't start with any of these, but as you hit gluttons or as you get different things from your characters as well, these will give you different things as well. Each of these cards is split into two halves with the top half being able to be used during your turn, which will grant you all kinds of things such as healing, additional dice when attacking, and other features, maybe even movements and all kinds of different things. Or during an enemy's turn, when an enemy attacks you, you can also play these cards as a reaction, triggering different things, such as retaliating against an enemy and dealing damage to them when they hit you, or blocking that damage with shields. And there'll be a number of different symbols on that as well. 
Now, as the campaign goes on and you progress from scenario to scenario, you'll have access to new cards that you can upgrade your deck with, such as the Chocolates Thrower or the Blueberry Popsicle, the Lollipop Shooter or the MNN Automatic, the Bubblegum Machine Gun, or the Cupcake Grenades. Same thing with Utility Deck. As the game goes on, you'll have access to upgraded utilities that give you more symbols that you can work with, such as Massive Movement, or Big Time Healing, or Defense, or def Combination of Defense and Retaliation. So all kinds of different things, and these are going to be identified by the little syrup that's on the top of these cards versus your basic cards. Now, it's not all fun and games in the Gnome's Kingdom. The gluttons have come to take their candy and chocolates, including the Big Bellies or Captain Fork, Cake Eater, and even Sweet Tooth. And each one of these enemies is going to have four basic stats, including its attack's range, the amount of hit points it has, its movement range, and the amount of damage it does when it attacks. Now, with the enemies, they work a little bit differently than the gnomes. They don't do straight damage. Anytime you take damage from one of the gluttons, you must draw a random number of donuts from the pile based on the attack value of that enemy. And these are going to range anywhere from values of 2 to 1 and 0 values. So, depending upon how you pull, you might end up with quite a bit of damage, or if you get lucky, no damage at all. In the cooperative mode, you're also going to trigger the enemy's activation at the end of each of the gnome's turns. You'll roll a die and consult the card, and that is going to tell you which colored gnomes are going, or which colored enemies or gluttons are going to activate based on their bases, and they will have colored clip-ons that you'll clip on to them based on the scenario. If there are none of that enemy out, you'll also be spawning new enemies into the different spawn zones as well. And if you get really unlucky and roll a hit, then all of the enemies on the board will get to activate and cause all kinds of problems for your poor gnomes. And the last new feature I want to talk about is the level system itself, as you're going to have these towers that you're going to construct based on the scenario that are going to add all kinds of different complexity to the game, giving players that are higher up advantages from shooting down at different enemies from lower levels, or penalties for shooting up on enemies from different levels, as well as bridges and other things, and also providing opportunities to push enemies off, doing additional damage to them as they fall, or having areas that are going to break, such as these different tiles and different features and all kinds of things based on the scenarios that are going to provide new and unique opportunities for players to explore the level and try to accomplish their goals in a magnitude of different ways. And the last thing I want to show you is a sample turn. So I have Danny here and he is ready to cause some mayhem. So during his turn, he can move up to a number of spaces that is, that is shown on his Sugar Rush card, which everybody starts with the same, which is two. So he can move up to two spaces. And then if he has any other bonuses, such as on his card, or if he has any utility cards, he can also choose to use one utility card that will let him do different things as well. And each utility card, again, is going to be different, providing bonuses to that based on the card. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and move. So I'll move one underneath here, and then on my second move, I'll move up onto this level here. As both of my weapons are melee weapons, and the other thing with my turn is that I must perform an attack action. So I have two different weapons to choose from, but let's say with this example, both of these weapons are melee weapons, so I have to be in the same space as my enemy. And if, for example, we didn't have an enemy here, what to do then? Well, I do have my Sugar Rush card, which always grants me a generic attack. It's not always quite as good as the weapon cards, but it at least lets me feel that requirement of always performing an attack during my turn. So with that being said, let's go ahead and choose one of the attacks to do. And I'm going to, I might as well do this Raspberry attack with the raspberry popsicle. So with this one, it's going to give me five dice. So I'll go ahead and gather those up. And then I also get bonuses with my, with Danny. He gives you two additional uh, dice each time he attacks. So I have that. And then again, if I had a utility card that I had played, that would have given me additional stuff. So at this point, then we'll go ahead and roll and see what happens. So I got two hits, so that's great. And I got some health as well. So if I had taken any damage, I could hold on to these. As again, I need pairs of dice to do stuff. So I'm going to do that. And then uh, since I don't have any damage, I'm going to go ahead and reroll all of these one time. 
and I picked up another damage, so that's good. And I got two pushes, so that will take care of that. And so then we would resolve this attack. So first off, I need a pair to do my initial damage on the Raspberry, so that's three damage. And then for each additional one that I roll beyond that, that would be another damage. So that's a total of four damage onto that guy there. So he is going to, that with the Cake Eater, he has four hit points, which is enough to eliminate him. So then we'll place him in the prison, and I get to draw a utility card for, to, for uh, fighting a glutton enemy. Now, if I wouldn't have killed them, so let's go ahead and say that I had only done three damage instead, I could choose to push him, which would let me push him one level down, or I could, which would have done damage to him, or with that as well, let's say, for example, I didn't do enough and I would, there wasn't anything else I could do during my turn. Anytime you attack an enemy and you're not able to defeat them, then they also get to retaliate against you. So then in his, going back over to him, he has a range of three, so he's in range, and then he would do two damage. So damage with this is a blind draw from the donut stack, and so I would take two tokens to see what kind of damage I took. So let's flip these over, and it was zero, so I took none on the first one, but then I took one on the second, so then I would have taken one damage. Then, if you're playing in the cooperative mode, you would also roll a die at the end of your turn once you've resolved anything else that you would need to do and consult the enemy chart. And then based on the symbol that you roll, you're going to activate the enemies of that color or in a, the bad situation, if you roll a hit, all of the enemies on the board. So hopefully you don't roll that, but each one of those situations is going to cause problems for the players moving forward. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.